Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we'll explore Spring Boot Transaction Management. By end of this video, you will get to know what is transaction, transaction management and how to integrate transaction management in Spring Boot applications. Without further delay, let's get started. So first we'll see what is a transaction. So transaction is nothing but a sequence of actions performed by the application that together pipeline to perform as a single operation for example if you want to perform multiple card operations so in this case we need to add these card operations as a one single operations and will perform an one shot if any one of the card operation is failed due to system unavailability or due to database issue we need to roll back all the operations so so if you see this example so here is my application transaction. So here we are performing multiple card operations as a one single operations created as a transaction. So, so this complete operation now considering as a single operation. So if this operation is completed, then we are committing this transaction and data will store into the database. One single operation, it will having the combination of multiple card operations. Okay. So if any one of the card operation is filed, then automatically roll back those whole transaction. So due to this one, you get data consistency. Some of the card operation is success and the, some of the card operations is not successful. Then we'll get some data inconsistency. We'll see one real time example. So you'll get better understanding about this transaction management. So if you see, this is one real time example. For example, there is a user, user is trying to book his flight ticket. So in this scenario, there is a two operations it has a one single operations. What is the two operations here? One is for whenever is user trying to book his flight ticket. So we need to store user information along with the booking confirmation information also. So here this user information will store the user underscore info and booking confirmation details stored in booking underscore details table. So these are the two tables will store this data, but these two operations will perform as a one single transaction. So now we'll see why do we need transaction management when we are performing two operation. One is storing the user information into the user table. So first user entered is in for user information and it will get stored into the user table. The same operation only is trying to making online payment. Due to some reasons, this payment has been cancelled. So in this case, what will happen? This user table will have the user information, but this ticket not booked. In this case, this table not store this ticket information details, right? So here that is the problem. If this happened thousands of times in a single day, so it is not a good practice to store the single action of the transaction because we will get data inconsistency with this. Okay, This is the problem we will get. To resolve this problem, Spring will introduce transaction management. With this, we can able to overcome this kind of problems. Spring provides transaction management which uses annotation to handle these issues. Okay. So what it will do the spring spring store this user information temporary memory. It is not stored directly that user information in the user table. It will store as a temporary me memory and it will check that payment information. If the payment is successful, then only it will complete the transaction. So here first it will store the user information in the temporary memory and whenever this payment details is also get the confirmation, then only it will store both information into the tables that is like successful transaction otherwise it will roll back the complete transaction so here these two operations we are adding as one transaction this is called sequence of operations adding into one single operations okay so in the spring boot there is annotation like uh, add the transaction so we are going to perform this uh, transaction management using this annotation transaction so you can use this annotation as a method level or class level when you are adding this annotation is a method level so it indicates that this particular method should be executed within the context of the transaction if the transaction becomes successful then this changes made to the database 
if the transaction is false all the changes made on the particular transaction can be rolled back it will be ensure the database remains in the consistent state now we'll see how to implement this transaction management in Spring Boot application with the example. So I have opened start.spring.io and I am selecting Moven project and Java and Spring Boot version 3.3.1 and group name com.azetic and artifact name Spring Boot transaction. So here is my artifact name and if you see my package name i am using com.azetech java version i am using 17 and now we'll add the dependencies one will add web another one we need to add jpa and another one will perform with the mysql database i'm using mysql driver then last one will use lambda so these are the four dependencies is required so once you are added the dependencies and you can generate this project and will import this project into IntelliJ ID. I have imported this project into the IntelliJ ID. And if you see my palm.xml file quickly. So here I'm using web and my SQL connector and data JPA. So these are the dependencies we are using as part of this Spring Boot transaction management. Now we'll perform this Spring Boot management with employee and department so if the employee is going to save into the database along with the department to reduce our time i have created already few entities for this one so if you see these entities so here is my employee class so employee is having id name salary and department and here is the table we are going to use employee table so if you see this employee table is having the department at the same way if you come to the department we are having the department id and department name okay so how we need to perform the transaction mechanism here is so if you come to the service and in this employee service so we are creating department with employee first we are creating the department object and we are storing department into the department table after that we will creating employee object and we are adding the department name into this particular employee object and we'll save this object into the employee table okay so here we are performing two different card operations okay one is for department table will save this department information and employee table will save this employment information these two operations we are performing as a one single operations with the annotation transaction so this annotation transactional we are added in the method level so spring will consider this is as a one transactions if any one of this operation is failed we need to roll back this complete transaction if both are saved successfully in the database means these operations are performed successful transaction is a successful okay so for this one i have created two repositories if you see my repositories one is for the department repository another one is for employee repository and if you see my controller this is the employee controller so we have only one api that is create employees so it will call to the create department with employees and we are perform these two operations as one single operation so this is the annotation transactional now i am using this annotation transactional at method level okay so if you see my so this one we are performing as a mysql database so for that one we need to add the mysql database configuration in your application that properties my port number is 9898 and quickly we'll check my database so in my database there is no database tables called employee and department okay now we'll quickly start this application once so application started if you see this log so here the two create table statements are executed one is create table and create table employee and you can come to the database and you can just refresh now we can see two tables are created employee and department so this employee table there, there is no data in department uh, table also there is no data okay now we'll perform testing on this using postman so if you come to the controller so this is my controller so in my controller there is one api that is create employees 
here i am not passing anything for this so i am directly creating objects inside the service class and inserting into the database so for this one you can come to the postman so here is the port number it is running 9898 so this is the get operation and we will try to hit this api now we can see department and employees created successfully now you can come to the database and you can replace this table now department id is one and if you see department name is it here department one name is it here department is it okay so now this both tables are successfully inserted data there is no issue in the operations right so due to this one it is completed one successful transaction for example if there is a issue in this transaction for example i am passing this employee as a null so here we are not creating any employee object right so in this case we'll get the issue on this operation so we need to roll back complete transaction okay now we'll try to insert the data again instead of it we'll give like hr okay this is the department and here is we'll check the employee name is azure tech and now we'll try to insert this data so we need to restart this application once so application is restarted uh, now table is already available and data is also available previously we added this transaction information into the database now we'll perform one more operation now if you see this error message so it is showing transaction rollback due to cannot invoke this set name because the employee one is null so it is transaction is rolled back due to this second operation if you come our service class this is one this is successfully completed but second one is failed due to this one this transaction is rolled back okay if you see the database tables also if you refresh this one there is no data in the employee table there is no data in the de department table okay so like this this transaction will perform sequence of operations as a one single operations so if you have this kind of requirement you can go with spring transaction few asset properties we can follow if you want to perform complex transaction mechanisms in spring boot applications i hope this video is helpful for you please like share and subscribe my channel